Yeah, certain fighters have showed a lot of promise coming into the UFC, where they had some spectacular performances, but recently they have been through a rough patch, which has affected their momentum in the UFC. So here is 10 failed UFC hype trains of 2019. Number 10. Abu Bakr Nurmagomedov Abu Bakr Nurmagomedov is the cousin of Habib Nurmagomedov who was set to make his UFC debut against David Zawada at UFC Final 163 in Russia. Abu Bakr, just like Habib, had a wrestling heavy fighting style and had racked up a mixed martial arts record of 14 wins, 2 losses and 1 draw. He had shown his wrestling dominance in the World Series of Fighting promotion and looked like a decent welterweight prospect. With Abu Bakr training alongside his cousin Habib, he was expected to have a dominant performance in his UFC debut. In the fight, both fighters kept the fight on their feet for a brief moment, where Abu Bakr was able to secure the takedown. Whilst in a dominant position, David Zawada was able to quickly sink in a triangle choke, forcing the tap. Even though Abu Bakr Nurmagomedov lost his UFC debut, it's not the end of the world, and he still has time to prove himself in the UFC. He'll definitely be back better and stronger than ever. Number 9. Daron Wynn Daron Wynn is the training partner of the former UFC light heavyweight and heavyweight champion Daniel Cormier, who was set to make his UFC debut against Eric Spicely at UFC Final 154. Daron Wynn had often been compared to Daniel Cormier due to both fighters having similar fighting styles and for being small in their weight classes. He came into the UFC with an undefeated mixed martial arts record of 5-0 and was expected to dominate his competition. In his fight against Eric Spicely, Daron Wynn remained very active throughout the three rounds, throwing clean strikes to get his hand raised with the unanimous decision win. He would next get matched up with Darren Stewart at UFC on ESPN 6. In the fight, both fighters had their moments but after a very close fight, the split decision was given to Darren Stewart. With Darren Wynn losing a very close fight, I believe this loss will only make him come back better as a fighter. It is still early days for him in the UFC where I can definitely see him progressing up the middleweight rankings. Number 8. Ricky Simone Ricky Simone is a bantamweight fighter who has shown great potential as one of the future contenders in the weight class. He has a solid well-rounded game and is a very difficult challenge to deal with inside the octagon. Before making his UFC debut, he was able to capture the LFA bantamweight title after defeating former UFC fighter Chico Camus by unanimous decision. After successfully defending his title, he was given a UFC contract and was scheduled to face Mirab Dajaveli at UFC Final 128 where he won the fight by a guillotine choke in the third round. He would next defeat Montel Jackson at UFC 227 and Rani here at UFC 234. After racking up three impressive finishes in the UFC, he was set to welcome back the former WEC featherweight champion Uriah Faber at UFC Final 155 in Sacramento. In the fight, Ricky Simone would get dropped with an overhand right and would get finished by TKO in the first round. At the age of 27, Ricky Simone is so young in the sport where he has time to gain the necessary experience and to develop himself into a complete mixed martial artist. I still believe that Ricky Simone will be a top challenge in the bantamweight division where already has shown great potential so far in his young career. Number 7. Aspen Ladd Aspen Ladd is a top-ranked bantamweight contender who in a short amount of time has climbed the bantamweight rankings and has defeated some top-name fighters in a dominant fashion. Her main strength lies in her grappling, where she has just mauled her opponents and has finished many of her opponents by TKO. After putting together a mixed martial arts record of 5-0 in an Invicta Fighting Championship, she would make her UFC debut against Lena Landsberg at UFC Final 118. In the fight, Aspen Ladd would overwhelm Lena Landsberg with her grappling, finishing her by TKO in the first round. She would next defeat Tonya Avenger by TKO and next won a unanimous decision over Sejaro Eubanks at UFC Final 152. She was next set to headline UFC Final 155 in Sacramento against Muay Thai specialist Jermaine Durandamy in a number one contenders bout. In the fight, Jermaine Durandamy would finish Aspen Ladd by TKO in just 16 seconds, suffering her first professional loss. At the age of 24, Aspen Ladd is still developing as a fighter and still has so much time to round out the weak areas of her game. Her talent at this young age is absolutely remarkable, where she'll definitely definitely come back as a better fighter. Number 6. Antonina Shevchenko Antonina Shevchenko is the sister of Valentina Shevchenko, who both have participated in many Muay Thai fights across the world, which has helped them transition their striking skills very well in MMA. Just like her sister Valentina, Antonina's fighting style is most predominantly striking based and has displayed this very well in MMA. After racking up a mixed martial arts record of 5-0, she was booked to face Jamie Nivara at Dana White's Contender Series, which she passed with flying colours after a brutal TKO finish in the second round. She was awarded with the UFC contract and made a UFC debut at the Ultimate Fighter 28 finale, dominating Ji Yoon Kim for all three rounds picking up a unanimous decision win. She would next face the well-experienced Roxanne Modefri at UFC Final 149. This fight would be a solid test for her, as Roxanne Modefri had the experience advantage. After a very close fight over the three rounds, the split decision was given to Roxanne Modefri. Antonina Shevchenko would bounce back and would pull off a Rene Kachuk finish over Lucy Pudilova at UFC on ESPN 5. With Antonina Shevchenko having a minor setback so early in her career, 
She showed that she could bounce back and dominate her fights like she always does. She is a unique talent in the UFC women's flyweight division, where she'll definitely be a title challenger sooner than later. Number 5. Gregor Gillespie Gregor Gillespie is a top-ranked lightweight fighter who had just dominated his competition purely with his wrestling. He began to gain a lot of momentum whilst climbing the lightweight rankings, where he was heading towards establishing himself as a true contender in the weight class. He made his UFC debut against Galesio Franca at UFC Final 99 and won the fight by unanimous decision. He would next go on a finishing streak defeating Andrew Holbrook, Jason Gonzalez, Jordan Rinaldi, Vink Pichel, and Yancy Medeiros. After putting together a six-fight winning streak, he entered the top 15 lightweight rankings and was ready to face stiffer competition. His next fight would be a big test as he would face Kevin Lee in a three-round lightweight bout at UFC 244. Kevin Lee had just lost to Rafael dos Santos at welterweight and was making his way back down to the lightweight division to start fresh. When both fighters squared off at UFC 244, Kevin Lee would land a heavy right hand and followed up with a vicious head kick, knocking Gregor Gillespie out cold. Gregor Gillespie suffered his first loss in his mixed martial arts career in a brutal fashion, where he'll definitely be back as a much better version of himself. His fighting style has proved very dominant in the lightweight division and will definitely establish himself as a true contender in the future. Number 4. Mackenzie Dern Mackenzie Dern is a world-class jiu-jitsu practitioner who has transitioned her grappling skills very well in the world of MMA, where she has shown great dominance on the ground. From a very young age, she has competed in grappling competitions across the world and even has a victory over Gabby Garcia. When transitioning to MMA, she was able to rack up 5 wins in a row, where 3 of them came off submissions. With a mixed martial arts record of 5-0, she signed with the UFC and was set to face Ashley Yoda in a 3-round strawweight bout. After a very close 3 rounds, the split decision was given to Mackenzie Dern. She would next be set to face Amanda Cooper at UFC 224, where on the day of the weigh-ins, she would miss the strawweight limit and weighed in at 123 pounds. In the fight, Mackenzie Dern would drop Amanda Cooper with a vicious right hand and sunk in a rear naked choke, forcing the tap. After two wins in the UFC, she would put her MMA career on hold due to pregnancy. She would make her return a year later and would be scheduled to face Amanda Hibas at UFC Final 161. In the fight, Amanda Hibas looked more sharper with the striking and landed the most significant shots over the rounds. After the three rounds, the unanimous decision was given to Amanda Hibas. With Mackenzie Dunn suffering her first professional loss in her MMA career, this loss will help motivate her to work on her weak areas of her game and come back better than ever. At the age of 26, she is so young and with a competitive background, she'll be back as a much better version of herself. Number 3. Crone Gracie Crone Gracie is the son of Hicks and Gracie who has helped him develop his grappling skills from a very young age, which has helped him achieve some of the best accolades in the grappling world. His grappling victories include wins over Benil Dariush, Shinya Aoki, and Gary Tonin. In 2014, he made the move to mixed martial arts and was able to compile a professional mixed martial arts record of 4-0, where all of his victories came off submissions. In 2019, he signed with the UFC and was set to make his debut against Alex Caceres at UFC on ESPN1 in a three-round featherweight bout. Alex Caceres clearly had the experience advantage as he clearly had more fights on his record. In the fight, Kron Gracie was quickly able to take the back of Alex and sunk in a rear naked choke, forcing the tap. Kron Gracie would next ask for a big test and wanted to fight the best fighters. The UFC presented him with Cub Swanson, who has faced the best of the best of the featherweight division. Both fighters accepted the fight and they were booked to face each other at UFC Final 161 in a three-round featherweight bout. In the fight, Cub Swanson was able to pick Kron Gracie apart from the outside and both fighters would get themselves in a bloody brawl. After the three rounds, Cub Swanson would be awarded the unanimous decision win, resulting in Crone Gracie suffering his first professional loss. Crone Gracie showed great toughness in the fight and definitely will be back as a much better version of himself. Even though he hasn't got much experience in the MMA world, he's still a world-class talent and definitely has a lot more to show next time he fights. Number 2. Johnny Walker Johnny Walker is a top light heavyweight contender who burst into the UFC full of energy and excitement, where he created so much attention in a very short amount of time. Johnny Walker first made his appearance on Dana White's Contender Series with a mixed martial arts record of 14 wins and 3 losses. He would earn his UFC contract after dominating former UFC fighter Enhiki Da Silva by unanimous decision. In his UFC debut, he would violently finish Khalil Rantree Jr. with a vicious elbow at UFC Final 140 and next demolish Justin Lidet at UFC Final 140 and lastly finished Misa Serkunov with the flying knee and punches at UFC 235. With three violent finishes under his record, Johnny Walker gained momentum quite rapidly where many wanted to see him fight John Jones for the championship. His next fight would be scheduled against top light heavyweight contender Corey Anderson at UFC 244. In the fight, Corey Anderson would stun Johnny Walker with a big right hand and followed up with a barrage of strikes. Johnny Walker would eat so many heavy shots which forced the referee to stop the fight. With his first official loss in the UFC, this will be a great learning 
learning process for Johnny Walker to make his return. Johnny Walker has so much talent and will definitely become a legit threat in the weight class in the near future. Number 1. Ben Askren Ben Askren had always been known to be one of the most dominant welterweights outside of the UFC due to his high level wrestling skills. He had captured both the Bellator and the 1FC welterweight titles, clearing out the contenders in both promotions. Just about all of the MMA fans wondered how Ben Askren would fare up against the elite fighters of the UFC. In late October 2018, it was announced that Ben Askren signed a multi-fight deal with the UFC and his first fight would be scheduled against ruthless Robbie Lawler at UFC 235. In the fight, Ben Askren would try to take the fight to the ground immediately but would get slammed on his head by Robbie Lawler and ate a barrage of heavy strikes on the ground. He miraculously was able to survive and managed to sink in a bulldog choke to get his hand raised. Ben Askren would next be scheduled to face Jorge Masvidal at FC 239. Jorge Masvidal had just knocked out Darren Till at FC Final 147 and looked great in his comeback fight. Leading up to the fight, both fighters would develop an intense rivalry which created a lot of buzz for the pay-per-view. At FC 239, it would take Jorge Masvidal 5 seconds to send Ben Askren to the Shadow Realm with the Cuban missile which he borrowed from his good friend and countryman Joel Romero. The KO would send shockwaves across the world and it was now the fastest KO in UFC history. Just two months after this devastating loss, Ben Askren would be booked to return against Damien Maia at UFC Final 162 where in the fight, he would get choked unconscious in the third round. Shortly after his second professional loss, he announced his retirement from the sport. Ben Askren made a huge impact coming into the UFC where he created so much attention in the welterweight division. Even though he lost his last two fights, Ben Askren has impacted the MMA world positively and we wish him nothing but the best for the future. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please make sure you hit that like button and make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when we post videos. I just want to give a shout out to Mind for Combat. Please check out his channel. He does some awesome fight breakdowns. I'll leave the link to his channel in the description below. So that was my video of the 10 failed UFC hype trains of 2019. Let me know your thoughts and comments in the section below. Also check out my last video where I talk about the evolution of Jorge Masvidal, the rebirth of Gamebred and my other list video where I talk about the 10 times trash talking went too far in the UFC. Please do let me know what other improvements I can make and any other list you would like me to make in the comment section below. I appreciate your support as always and I'll catch you guys next time.